I've got some bloodwood blanks all chucked up. I've got uh, slimline bushings on here and I'm ready to start turning. These thinner pens, there's a lot of material I've got to remove. So I've got these round now and next I just need to finalize the shape down to the bushings. Now I'll switch to the skew to flatten some things out. Now with everything refined, we can start sanding. First, we need to remove the tool rest. We're gonna start with 120 and then move up to 2000. I did my final shaping with 400 grit. Sandpaper, think of it as your last tool. It's it's the best for shaping, getting it right down to the bushing so everything's gonna match up flush. It's really important at this point because sandpaper is going on from 600 really aren't gonna remove much material. So at 400, I want these to be perfectly flush. Now I'm going to start from 600 up to 2000, which some people would say is too high of a grit on the wood, but I need the wood to be almost a perfect finish because when that CA glue, the high gloss finish goes on, it's gonna make any imperfections in it pop. So I wanna make sure it's perfect. After every grit, you need to inspect it for any sanding marks of the previous grit. That's a good finish, so we're going to move to the next grid, which is 1200. At this point, the wood itself is really starting to bring out a gloss. 1500. One thing you'll find that helps is sanding with the grain from end to end with the lathe off is going to give you a more consistent finish and it's also going to work into the wood a little bit more. You're going to find you get more aggressiveness. So this is a really good way to get the finish even better. And now for the final 2000 and I'm just going to end with grain side to side. I'm not going to give it a final spin. This would be the point where you double check it for the last time and if you were doing say like a mineral oil finish this is where you'd stop put the mineral oil on and it'd be done we're gonna go a step farther and put the cyan acro light ca finish on it and it gives it a really durable high gloss finish with a square of a napkin or paper towel we're going to apply it on here while the lathe is spinning pretty slow it's important whenever you're putting this on, we're gonna go for as thin as we can. We don't wanna pile it on on the first coat or the second coat or the third coat. We're probably gonna put about six, maybe 12 coats on here. But the thinner the coat, it's gonna give you a much smoother finish. And our goal is after we sand it, we wanna take off as little material as possible. So the smoother we can lay the glue on, the less we have to remove. At a certain point here, I got too much buildup, so it's gonna be tricky to get this one flat. You wanna to try to avoid building up, which is what happened here. So that's just a little bit more work. Typically, I would start sanding if I got a good flat finish with 600, but because of this, we're gonna start with 400. Now you can see the low spots here. You can also see how aggressive this 400 grit is. So you gotta be really careful, especially whenever you have a thin coat. I only have three coats on here and then I like to sand another three coats, sand, and then do that process as deep as I want the finish to be. So this is just about good. I'm gonna take this a little bit more without the lathe spinning, sand the spots that I need to. See what happens whenever it builds up. I don't know if you can see it, but there's these little white dots. There's a white dot there, a white dot there, and the same thing on the other side. 
it forms those dots so we need to sand those away make sure everything is just perfect because whenever you put the next coat on it's going to seal that in there this is good now so what i ended up doing was just flattening it and at some points i sanded through the finish which isn't a problem at this point this is the first coat so if you have a little spot where you sand it through the finish we're going to be building up more layers so I'm definitely going to need to build up more layers because I had to take off more material than I wanted on the first one. So just make sure you apply the thinner coats. That went on a bit better. There's still a few spots here where it built up a little bit, but we're just gonna sand those down, make sure everything is flat. On some of these spots, I do need to use just a little bit of this 400 to get it flat. Best case scenario, I'd be able to start with 600, but I need to get this flat first. Now we can start with the 600 grit. I'm going to turn the machine on, and then once I'm done with that, we're gonna sand it down. While that's spinning, we got mostly everything flat, but now we're just looking for those shiny spots. And this is where we're gonna start sanding from end to end of the grain. And it's gonna make sure everything stays flat in this direction, but it's also gonna be more aggressive only on the spots you need it to be. Whenever it's spinning, you can sand through portions that don't need to be sanded through. So I can have more control this way and I don't have to worry about going through the CA glue. Now that I have this flat, I'm gonna add some more coats to it. That's just gonna really make the finish have a deep look to it. The more coats you add, the more deep it'll look whenever you're done. And personally, I like the deep look to the finish. This is what we want it to look like. It's very smooth and sanding before we just put these on made it a lot easier. So I'm going to sand 600 from end to end and then we'll just start moving up our grits. Now everything is perfectly flat with the 600 grit. We're gonna start moving up now. I'm going to go to 1200 and then move our way up to 1000. 1500 you want to inspect your sandpaper wherever you were sanding if you look right here see I have some orange that's because I have it on my thumb but right here was where I was sanding you want to check because if you have any of that orange color of the wood you need to inspect it see if you have any holes in the finish or you could have sanded through and it could have picked up sawdust and that would be a dead giveaway that you have a hole in your finish lastly we'll do 2000 Now we'll pop it off the mandrel and the last step will be the buffing wheel and that's where it really polishes it out makes it look like glass. Before I take it to the buffing wheel I'm going to sand off the edges here where there's some CA glue because I don't want those to chip off so I'm going to carefully take them. This is a piece of 400, round off the edges. This one is still attached to the bushing so I'm going to buff it with them on there because I don't have to worry about it chipping the edges here. That right there is what all the work is for. Uh, almost flawless finish. There's still a few points where I need to keep buffing it, but it just looks like glass over the wood. And the CA finish takes a lot more work than some other finishes, but it's really worth it for the outcome. Once these are buffed, they always look amazing. It's really what makes or breaks the, the pen. I mean, it looks so good. All that work that goes into getting this finish all flat is really worth it because if it's still warbly, that line will show it. So you need to make sure everything's flat and the extra work that goes into it's definitely worth it. I'm gonna crack off the bushings on these sides. 
and then sand the edges. It's important that these are clean on the inside whenever we assemble it. We don't want little scraps of CA glue or anything to make it expand more than it needs to and it could crack the blend. I'm using this kit that I got from Rockler. It's a chrome slimline pen kit. It was a custom order and I really like it. There's been a few things with the slimline kits that I've gotten complaints about. One of them being the cartridge that comes with it. So I just get the cross brand refill uh, cartridges. There are maybe seven or eight dollars, seven dollars a cartridge, which is pretty expensive, but it's worth it because the cartridges that come with this, they really can only write straight up and down. They can't write at an angle. And it's a big deal that the pen needs to write just as well as it looks. So if it has a really bad cartridge, but it looks great, I mean, sure, but it, it needs to write well. That's one of the most important things of selling pens. Also for the price point I'm selling them for, they need to be able to write well. I've gotta say that the, uh, the chrome and bloodwood look very good together. I like this combination. I might do it a little bit more. I mean, that looks really nice. We'll press on the tip. It's always great when they meet up just perfectly flush. And the bushings, whenever you turned it right down to the bushings and it fits perfectly with the tip. That's always satisfying to see. Now the twist mechanism gets pressed onto the back and there's a little crimped line right there that we push it up to. And about the only thing this refill is good for is checking to make sure everything is the correct size. Actually, first you gotta pull off this little clay tip. Make sure this sticks out the right amount. So make sure that it fully extends. And then whenever you retract this, it fully retracts into the pen. That's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking this for. This is one of the cross refills that I'm going to go ahead and put in. Then the little accent ring that goes between the two halves and the back half. If you want, you would line up the grain, but this is a more subtle grain and I don't think it needs to be lined up. That looks really good. And this order is complete. I've got an ebony pen here with the 24 karat gold and the slim line with the chrome hardware. It looks really nice. I got it in this really quite nice case. I'm very impressed with it. It was from Penn State Industries. It's made out of rosewood and it really pops. I kind of wasn't expecting it to be this high quality. It's a really nice box with a really nice finish. So this pen was made out of a blank of wood just like this was able to turn it into something really quite beautiful. Uh, I've never worked with bloodwood before. It was really quite interesting to work with. It's a softer wood. Uh, pen turning is really interesting. I get to work with a lot of different woods. This is a, uh, it's definitely a softer wood. It's similar to B Paduke, but I mean, the shade is a little bit different, a little bit more red, different grain, but in some ways it's similar. I really like it and I'm definitely going to be making a few more things out of it. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.